So, productizers, you've done your outreach, you've had your sales conversations, and you have some people on the hook. Now your prospects want a fleshed out proposal of the services that you're offering so they can see, on paper, exactly what they're getting, getting themselves into. Writing an effective proposal can really set your web design firm apart. It's a chance to show potential clients that you've listened to them, that you understand their problems, and that you, you are the right company to solve them. It should be viewed as an extension of the sales process. So let's go through a sample proposal now to see how to best st structure the proposal. You should see a sample proposal as one of the docs in the documents cache available at productize.com slash DL. So here is a sample proposal and you are free to use this for your clients. Obviously you'll want to replace the your company and company with the actual uh, names there but um, you're free to use this uh, as you wish. So let's go through this now and see what sections we include in the proposal and why we include them. So first we have the snapshot sec section. And this is where you discuss at a high level the things that you talked about when you spoke with a prospect, what they do and what they want to accomplish. And next we have the website goal. This is where you dive deeper into what they hope a new website will do for their business and try to use the language that the prospect used when you spoke with him or her. After that, we have the solution section. And here's where you describe how you're going to accomplish the goals set out in the website goal section. Um, so we have a section here, the new website will be designed to do the following things and talk about some kind of more technical behind the scenes stuff uh, in this section. Then we have the further consideration section which is optional but it's a good place to talk about some possible upsells and the usefulness of more expensive ongoing services. So you don't want to sell them the ongoing services here, you don't want to upsell them here necessarily but simply plant the seed so that you can hopefully upsell them later and it'll be something that they've already been thinking about. So after that we have the project timeline and one of the big unknowns for your potential client is what is it going to be like to work with the company and so the project timeline section should help answer that question by giving them sort of a play-by-play -play of what it's like working with you. So next we have the, the real meat of the proposal and like the nitty-gritty of what you're actually selling. So first is the scope of work and here you want to be very careful only to include things that you're actually offering. If a client calls you out on something that you said you were offering but you didn't actually offer it, it can lead to an unhappy client or worse, public bad reviews. And I unfortunately know this from experience. So early on in the life of Juris Page, we took a boilerplate proposal and modified it for our purposes. But we left in a few things that we weren't actually doing. So it wasn't intentional, but our clients called us out on it and we were left with nothing to do but apologize and go back and do the work for them. So we were fortunate enough that the client didn't leave bad reviews, but it still didn't feel good to essentially uh, have promised something that we didn't deliver. Uh, so j just a little anecdote for you there. Don't uh, include things that you're not actually going to be delivering. Next, the pages to include section right here gives you an opportunity to discuss the purpose of each page or page type of the website. So it's not required and honestly most prospects will probably skim it very quickly if at all but it can be good information to have for prospects that sweat the details. After this pages section, you should have sections for any special features you may be including for your clients like analytics or reporting. So we have uh, an analytics and reporting section right here. Um, then you have a deliverables section that basically summarizes and itemizes the scope of work. So the site setup and then the ongoing. The next steps section tells your prospect what they should do in order to accept the proposal and get started. 
Then we have the investment section. So the investment section details exactly how much each part of your service costs. This is typically the part of the proposal that your prospect will spend the most time looking at. So don't be afraid to add a little justification or sales talk here. And we have two different sections, one for the upfront and sorry, one for the upfront and uh, hosting and then one for add-ons and extras. And finally, we like to include the actual legal agreement with the proposal. This is the last section of the proposal and for legal reasons I would suggest having it reviewed by a lawyer. That said, I would say that most web design companies probably don't spend the money to get their agreements reviewed professionally and choose to do it on their own. So if you have a few prospects ready to go, work on your proposal now, uh, customize this proposal if you want, and if you don't have any prospects ready to go, don't worry, let's just continue to the next section where we talk about getting testimonials from your clients. See you there.